Dad, did a stork really bring my baby brother? Well, Timmy, I'm glad you asked that question. Because it's about time that we sit down and have a chat about the Get Real Podcast. You are listening to Get Real Podcast. All right, Glenn, back in the fishbowl. Here we are. Glenn, when I was young, I was what many called a skate rat. Okay, I can see that. And there was a certain type of music which was my preference and still is a big part of what I listen to. I listen to a lot of punk. You punk? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and in the uh, the mid-late 80s, and we listened to a lot of things that were called thrash. It was kind mm-hmm. of almost a mixture between metal and between punk, and right. I don't know what it was. But That was Pantera and stuff it, like that. Well, it really moved on me. I mean, there were Christian bands. I got saved when I was a teenager, and there was a lot of Christian bands that I was really into. But I think you and I talk about heavy metal a lot because mm-hmm. we love it. You are like Dan, you know, because you know that I listen to some metal, but I really, really enjoy punk. Some of the music that I try to write, and I'm not that gifted, has a punk flavor to it. It's got some of those things. And I started thinking last week, preparing for this interview today, about the difference between heavy metal and punk rock. Not so much just musically, oh, well, it's got double kick drum and this, not, not just on that, but as far as an expression of how they differ. And I thought about it and I said... You know, I really think that metal is kind of like this Martin Luther move of like the 95 theses. It's it's cerebral. It's it's a little different. Punk rock is a little more individually. It, it cuts through the mix of life. It cuts to the chase. It's very direct. It's very direct. Cuts to the chase. And metal does, but metal does more in a... Um, Cerebral sense. Cerebral sense, more of a methodical uh, whatever. This cuts through all the math and says, hey... And I thought about, I saw something on YouTube where they were talking about, and um, I don't want to bring up anything that be misconstrued as offensive, but um, as far as there was a certain individual in the UK back in the day um, that got exposed by a punk rocker, I believe it was in the 70s, I think it was Johnny Rotten, and he called out somebody, and the BBC banned him, okay? okay? And they covered for this guy, but I think about this guy, this punk rocker, his life was not good in the sense of moral. I'm sure it was full of degeneracy and excess and all sorts of harmful behaviors and so forth. But the fact that I believe that God used his mouth to cut through the mix and expose someone that was doing real evil to children, that just, to me, that is real punk rock. Okay? So, Dan, what you're saying is what we've been saying all along, all along is that God uses whom he chooses and how he to use he absolutely does. And now I think about where we're at right now. People might think that, oh, punk rock with a message that's not wrapped in degeneracy. Oh, that's not real. Or punk rock that would be talking about the very things of the God that we want people to meet and know. You would think that, oh, that's an oxymoron. That doesn't really work. That's sappy. Nothing could be further from the truth. I believe that society has devolved so far that the edgiest thing in the world, the pinnacle of current counterculture would be someone using punk rock to actually speak about the things of God. So I think that is absolutely awesome. Please introduce our guest. We have with us today from the UK, Great Britain, Peter Field from Peter 118. And I'm very excited to have him with us today in the studio via the magic of the internet. Hey, Peter. Peter, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about Peter 118? How did you guys get started? Yeah, well, um, it started out with me going into bars and clubs with my acoustic guitar uh, about 2012. And then in 2014, I did a song called Radio. It ended up getting picked up on national radio in Japan. Ended up being like um, going out to 60 million people. And it was like um, it was like the mainstream radio, mainstream secular. Um, and then from then on, um, I thought, right, I'm going to get a band together. So... Um, I did an acoustic gig in a museum and I met the drummer Sam, he was like 15, 16. I said, do you want to be in a band? He joined Peter 118 and I had a bass player from London at the time. Um, He later moved back, moved away and um, I recruited Janine, my wife on the bass. She had like two weeks to learn the bass before she did did her first gig. (laughs) No pressure. (laughs) Dan and I were actually talking about that the other day. I was going to come home and tell my wife that we're starting a metal band because most of the bands that we've been working with and interviewing are husband and wife teams, which is really kind of yeah. neat. 
I was just going to walk in the door and be like, honey, I had this epiphany today. We're starting a metal band and you're going to play drums or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Probably would not have gone over really, really well. And I also understand that before you start Peter 118, you spent some time doing secular punk, if, if, if that's what you yeah, would call it. Yeah, I was um, as part of my testimony, really. I was in a secular punk band before I became a Christian. I did that for 10 years. Um, we toured Europe. Um, we played with a band called The Bouncing Souls. They were an epitaph. We played with a lot of old school bands like Sham 69, Stiff Little Fingers, The Damned. And um, it all came, it, it all ended in about 2005. And um, I didn't know what to do with my life. And then, you know, I um, I found God, you know, joined a church. And I gave punk rock up completely because because my life, I live for punk. And um, I kind of put that put that on its head and got rid of it. But then God called me back into the punk scene. Um, I developed tinnitus in my left ear for, for the punk music, but Jesus healed t my tinnitus. Oh. And now I go back into bars and clubs, you know, proclaiming the name of Jesus. Peter, question. Why punk? What reached out to you when you first encountered punk? Tell us a little bit about that. And then why did that just move you to the point that you wanted to create that? Quite interestingly, you're on about punk and metal. Well, I'm, a, I'm in a place called Stoke-on-Trent. I grew up in Stoke-on-Trent. Well, and from Stoke-on-Trent, you've got a band called Discharge. Now, Discharge started like um, thrash metal, um, and they were like one of the very early bands, um, Discharge, the Skeptics. So I was kind of, you know, in the bars and clubs, you, you meet these bands, you start listening to them. And it was in the 90s, so, you know, it was going up listening to the 90s punk rock as well, so like Green Day, Rancid Offspring. So I was into the hardcore punk, but also the pop punk stuff. And when you started out with an acoustic set, so you did acoustic uh, punk, that's very interesting. Yeah, I just wrote songs on my acoustic guitar and went into the bars and clubs playing my songs, and then a band developed, and it's kind of you know gradually grown. Can you tell us a little bit about how your punk music has ministered to people and brought about healing? Okay, so um, we teamed up with a tour called the Extreme Tour, and um, they're from America. Um, they came over to the UK, and we were playing a set with the Extreme Tour, and a lad came up to me and said that during the set, he felt better. He felt that some kind of like heaviness had lifted off him, um, and it was in a song called We Don't Need It. Now, the song talks about my testimony in alcohol, how I made, how I made a vow to God to give alcohol up. So, um, you know, that was an example. Um, we met um, a girl for the punk rock scene that we took to Creation Fest last summer and she gave her life to God, you know, and we're just going to, you know, a lot of bars and clubs and the, the pop punk scene and spread, the, you know, spread the message. And the, I love the UK it. UK pop punk yeah. scene seems to have taken to Peter 118 over the past 18 months. So. I have to say that's, that's true because when I listen to your music, I smile. Yeah. It, okay. It's very light. It's... It makes me it makes me happy. It has an effect on it where I'm like, and even watching your videos, just the spirit that you that that's demonstrated through you, it's it's a very sweet spirit at the same time that you're just being very straightforward and just calling it out and calling for what it is and, and cutting to the chase. So for me, there is, I've, I experience that lightness when I listen to your music as well, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on the on the Get Real podcast is that it does have a definite effect. It affects me. It moves me. Well, Peter, we're in the Bible Belt of the United States. The South of the United States has got churches everywhere, Bibles everywhere, almost to the point that a lot of the message becomes muted. And you'll see the typical dress, the suit, the hair, the conservative thing. And when I heard Christian punk and when I heard your music, but as a youth, I was into uh Pat Nobody, Nobody Special, Undercover, a lot of different bands from the, the 80s. And when I heard that and I had just gotten saved, I found it so refreshing because what the suits would always tell me, the squares, and it was just kind of blah, blah, blah. But when I heard a guy that wrestled with his demons of addiction, that wrestled with real life, with loneliness, with uh, breaking up with a girl or, or losing a loved one, and, and they were just out there and they put it out there, no holds barred, it spoke to me in a way that other Christian music or even other just regular music, it, it didn't. So I, I think you you have a very, very effective um, genre, but also the spirit behind it. The same thing. It was uplifting without that sounding cheesy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that it was it was still punk yeah, rock, sure. but it, yeah. 
it moved me. So that's uh, that's that's neat. Well, Christian music is supposed to uplift us anyway because God's spirit in it. So let's put yes. God's spirit into punk rock, and that's what I do. One of the things that uh, I'm not as well versed in punk as, as Dan is, but I was doing some research, just taking a look at some things, and the influence that punk did have on metal and has had on metal is unreal. Metallica, most of their influence from the early years was from punk rock. And if you take a look at most of your metal bands today, uh, with the way that they dress, with the way that they dye their hair, I was thinking about uh, Alyssa White Glues from Arch Enemy and her blue hair. That all comes from the punk genre. It just being yeah. free to express yourself and the influence and the tie, the tie that's between the two. And how God right now is using both of those genres very, very powerfully and effectively to touch people's lives. Metallica did that that cover of Discharge, hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're a punk rock band from my hometown. And where is your hometown? I'm sorry, where, where are you all located? It's, it's in the middle of England, so we're like one hour um, south of Manchester, one hour north of Birmingham, so it's smack bang in the center of England. Okay. How do you find the church receives you in England? Do yeah, they, good question. Do they, are they like, yes, this is awesome, or how in the world can God use this genre? How do, how do they receive you? What kind of reactions have you gotten? Well, the UK is a bit, it's very much different than America. So in the UK, the church is, not many people go to church, and we have very little support from the national church. So um, like the church I attend, it gets 15 people a week or less. Oh wow! And a lot of church, a lot of churches are like that in the UK. The churches are closing down. Church attendance is low, so there isn't that many opportunities to play churches. However, my church, even though we're smaller numbers, they are very supportive. So they let me put shows on, and we invite bands across to, who are on tour, and we we come and play. So you know, I'm blessed to have a, a church that does support what I do, but. That's a one-off. So you know, in the UK, you know, there is very little support. So, church attendance is not big there. Are there a lot of believers in the UK? People like you that have put their faith well, in the Lord? I would say in the in the in the country, there's eight alternative Christian bands, eight or less, and that's for the whole country. Wow. We have well, worship bands, but you know, maybe one or two, myself and another band do Christian punk, and another band does metal, but in total, maybe eight or less. Wow. So a lot a lot of the American bands are coming to the UK because we we struggle, so we, we struggle to get tours off the road because it, it doesn't exist. The, the mu Christian music industry doesn't exist in the UK. Interesting, because it's so big here, but there's one thing that I think about, and I, I don't know, I pray this would be the case, but... Here in the United States, in the Bible Belt, if you go out and you're, you're being evangelistic, a lot of people will blow you off because they think they've heard it a thousand times or they're very hardened towards the Word, not because of some secular mindset necessarily, but they've just heard so many churches, so much stuff, so much Bible thumping that they're just kind of inoculated and they don't want to hear anymore. But I've noticed in places like that, it could almost be, you know, they just had out in California what they call a super bloom. And it's when the desert will go like years without enough rainfall for seeds to germinate. And then the second they get enough rainfall, it goes crazy and turns into just a, it's like a wildflower festival, like everywhere. So the desert blows up and blooms. It's because the, the soil is so fertile because it rarely gets enough rain. I pray that would be the case, that those you would be so unique that people would be like, whoa, this guy's ministering to my soul, to the gospel. What is this? And that curiosity, because the hardness on our side can be tough to deal with. They think they've heard it a million times and they want nothing to do they with it. They want nothing to do with it. And just yesterday, from where our studio is located, I took a, I took a little road trip to kind of explore what's around here. We just moved into this, this location. And I counted within a 10 mile radius, six different churches surrounding our studio, six churches wow. within a 10 mile radius. And you're like, oh, wow, that's exciting. But people are so hardened here in the United States to the message. They fill them up. And what happens is a lot of people very well, meaning people, what they'll do in the United States is they'll be like, well, there's a lot of people that are really not believing the gospel there's not a lot of believers so what we're going to do is we're going to start another church so religious. yeah they, they're just they, christians exactly you, you you hit the nail on the head and 
you just saying that there's only eight alternative Christian bands in the UK. That's mind blowing. That is mind blowing, but it also highlights the importance of what you're doing through your music and what God's called you to. And I just really want to encourage you to keep going in, in the route that you're going here. And to our listeners here in the United States, we have listeners all over the world. Uh, how can they find out more about your band and listen to your music? And, and how can how can they do that? Well, they, we've got website, peter118.com, but go over to um, Facebook, you know, um, add, add myself, Peter James Field, or Peter118. We have um, a Facebook group called Peter118 UK. That's got um, 1.2 thousand um, members. Um, and, and just look around UK Pop Punk because you'll see a lot of Peter118 activity, you know, in the secular pop punk groups. What are you working on lately? Like, when was your latest re release? We've just done um, a brand new song. Um, it was recorded in February, a um, song called Waiting. So that kind of, not our usual style, but I want to kind of mix in a bit of grunge. So this song is a bit of like a crossover of Green Day to Nirvana. Um, so we've got a bit of like, um, you know, a different style, but, you know, we've enjoyed it. We're going to play that song Waiting for our listeners so they can get a taste of just how good you guys are. Can you explain to us a little bit the background behind that song? Yeah, I think it was, I wrote the song, it was about two or three years ago before I actually put the guitars down and, you know, released it. So it was, I was waiting for, uh, you know, things to happen in my life, you know what I mean, to get married, um, you know, get a house settled down. And um, and it talks about the chorus says, come listen up, want to hold your hand. So Jesus wants to hold our hand. And that was, you know, that inspired me to write the chorus. So, you know, sometimes... We have to wait in life, but Jesus is with us. He holds our hands, you know, through life. I wish I had learned that lesson when I was a young believer, that we have to wait a lot of times on the Lord. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because a lot of mistakes that people walk into when they first meet the Lord, there's this fresh newness of excitement of, wow, this is a really cool, awesome relationship. All this stuff starts to open up. But I think in our Western societies that we think that, okay, we're here we believe in the Lord, we're in relationship with him, and now everything's just going to happen automatically. But it doesn't work that way because in that waiting period, one of the things, and Peter, you might have had this too, and this might be where you're getting at, God works a lot of stuff out of us and in us in that relationship with him to make us stronger believers in that waiting period. And then once those things are worked out, he releases those blessings. Yeah. And you can get bewildered yeah. in the journey, you know, <laughs> like, you're like, what's going on? What's you going left on? me. And then you, you have an epiphany and you're like, oh, I see why you let me do that stupid thing, that stupid thing <laughs> and still use me in some way. You know, that's, that's humbling. We have a question uh, for you. This is very unique okay. in that a lot of times we reach out to different bands and what we call prophetic artists to bring them onto our show to discuss their art and how God's moving through them. Uh, but you reached out to us. How did you find out about Lithos Cry and the Get Real podcast? I see, I see a lot of um, lot of posts on Facebook and in the social media groups. So I think that's where you know I, I found you know different radio stations and connected with you guys. Social media is you know it's kind of the way forward. I really enjoyed uh, what was the song we were listening to before we were checking out some more of y'all's music before we had you on. What was the? It was it Money and Lies. Money and Lies. I yeah. like that one. I really <laughs> do. Lies. Yeah. Yeah, that that's like an old school punk rock song. Uh -huh. So that talks about um, you know don't trust in money because money will let you down. You know, trust in Jesus. Money and lies. The way you hypnotize people get sidetracked into materialism, and, and we don't need materialism. So that's, it's a bit, you know, it's straight, you know, straight message. Yeah. Don't there you go. Me. Peter, I'm going to give you a fist bump right over <laughs> here, okay? Because there you are, cutting right to yeah, the chase. Yeah, me too. i got to get in there. Right okay, to the get chase. Oh, yeah. For, for years, Dan and I have talked and, and ministered about the lies that come through with money and, and everything like that. And look at that. Deb just came into the studio with some, Thank you. some Coke Zeros. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Deb. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Um, it just cuts right to the chase. Yeah, it resonates. That's it what does. I like about punk. Punk is the most loving punch in the face you've ever had, you know? That's a good way to put it. <laughs> that's, that's a really good way to put it. And you just signed also, too, with Raven Faith Records. Is, it, is that correct, Peter? 
Yeah, yeah, we've resigned our contract to Raven Faith and we're going to be working on a new album. So um, the waiting song is kind of like um, a free download. So download the free album, but there's more to come. So um, can, can they buy merch? Y'all have merch? I'd love a T-shirt or something. I'd, I'd uh, where do we yeah, go for merchandise? Uh, there's there's merch, there's, there's shirts, there's caps, there's stickers. But it's what I would suggest um, go through eBay because if you Google Peter One One Eight eBay, you'll find stuff on eBay rather than go through our site. Excellent. So you can buy to our listeners in the states and around the world, check these guys out. They're awesome. Their music is great. The message is is sublime. So d- check them out. Buy the merch. Um, enjoy the music. Yeah, this is an artist that. Our listeners support these guys. They are doing a work in a very dry land over in England right now, as, as we just heard. God's using them. God's used them to bring about healing in people's lives, to lift depression. It's a loving punch in the face what they do. Their sound is quality. Really, when I listen to your music, Peter, and I watch your videos, uh, I'm very visual and I really enjoy music videos. And when I watch your videos, the quality of the production in those videos, you've really dedicated it all to the Lord. You're putting everything into it uh, to make it quality that people are, that they'll take notice. It's not some third-rate you know video with Uncle Louie's camcorder that you did <laughs> in a garage, and, and and that's okay every once in a while, you know. Uh, but it's high-quality stuff, and it really honors the Lord what you're doing. So these this is a band for our listeners, guys. Listen to them, support them. We love them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. No, that's great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Peter, do you have anything else that you want to share with our listeners today? No, you know, thanks. Um, you know, keep the UK in prayers because we do need support. Yeah. Um, if there's any American bands that want to come over to the UK, I'm happy to host them and we can do some shows at our church. Um, you know, we need all, all the support we can and let's see what God's going to do in, in the United Kingdom. Are you thinking about coming back to the United States anytime soon? I'd like to, yeah. Um, been to Nashville and California, but you know, I'd love to come back to America and do some shows. Well, you've definitely got friends in South Carolina. Yeah, so. if you guys need yeah, a place to you. crash, yeah, <laughs> we're we're because I know the Extreme Tour comes through Charleston, South Carolina, here in the United States, and they're going to be here in the month of July. Uh, and there's another band that we're good friends with, Filthy Rags, uh, and they're going to be coming through and hanging out here at the Get Real Studio, and probably uh, hanging out in the Get Real be- uh, guest bedroom next <laughs> there door. We go. So, <laughs> yeah, if there's anything we can do for you, just reach out to us, and um, that's really exciting. I'd love to go to the UK. All of pretty much eighty percent of my genetics come from your island over there. So <laughs> okay. it's uh, and the other part was from uh, I guess Ireland next door. So um, there's uh, yeah, I want to visit. I think I have ancestors from Kent. And then the others were kicked out of Scotland for fighting or being bad or whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> they were too punk rock for their day. So, Peter, thank you yeah, very Peter. much, and we're gonna thank listen to. Guys. Thank you. We're gonna listen to waiting, and here is Peter one one eight. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was. <laughs> 